Northampton County citizens will never, ever accept coal ash in their county. The company that wants to come into Northampton gives false assurances and empty promises to the people of Northampton County. Uh, this coal ash facility threatens Northampton County's public health, its environment, and the reputation of the county. It threatens future generations. So county officials must not endorse or approve or issue a special use permit for any reason to Vista Green, the coal ash waste facility. Northampton County could become the coal ash capital for the eastern United States and beyond. <clears throat> there are four main reasons why the people of Northampton County should have opposed Vista Green. Coal ash is dangerous. It poses a serious health and, and environmental risks. Uh, there are very few federal and state regulations and laws that protect the people and the environment. Modern lined landfills are well documented uh, and they fail. Uh, the economic benefits don't outweigh the risks, and Northampton County citizens have equal and constitutional rights to protect their persons and properties, just as everyone else does. Yet even though coal ash is dangerous and has uh, constituents such as arsenic, boron, chromium, cadmium, lead, mercury, and more, the EPA has ruled that coal ash is non-hazardous, just because the EPA says that it's non-hazardous doesn't mean that it isn't. Coal ash can also contain radioactive elements and hazardous chemicals such as PCBs. According to Therese Fick with the Blue Ridge Environmental Defense League, she's asked two very simple questions. What about the PCBs and the radioactive materials? The response from uh, Vista Green was evasive. Uh, they said that the project had not yet received approval, the facility hasn't been built, testing methods and results would be available to the public in accordance with EPA regulations when the project was fully operating. Vista Green knows that if test results were to show that the coal ash is contaminated with radioactive elements or PCBs, which is not unlikely, the coal ash could not be buried uh, in a regular sub-D solid waste landfill. The truth is coal ash has serious health effects. It can affect uh, children particularly uh, with nervous damage. It can cause, lead can cause all kinds of problems uh, in children and uh, chromium causes stomach and intestinal problems. 50,000 members of the Physicians for Social Responsibility have endorsed a report that says coal ash poses a threat to our environment and health. And these doctors say that uh, coal ash causes an acute risk of cancer, it causes neurological effects, heart damage, lung and kidney disease, gastrointestinal illness, birth defects, and impaired bone growth. The EPA knows about the dangers and risks, yet it regulates coal ash the same as regular household trash. Just because the EPA says that coal ash is non-hazardous does not mean that it is. And just because Vista Green calls itself green doesn't mean that it is green, at least not environmentally speaking. State and federal legislation and regulations will not protect the people of Northampton County, even though Vista Green claims that it will do everything in accordance with federal law. In accordance with federal law just means that companies like Vista Green are welcome to legally get rich off of poisoning poor communities such as Northampton County. This proposed facility would be a mega commercial landfill, a multiple landfill and pound and pond uh, employment complex that is a looming threat to Northampton County and the region. A second reason why the people of Northampton County uh, oppose Vista Green is that modern lined landfills have a well-documented history of contaminating air, water, and, in so and soil. And even the EPA knows that all landfills will eventually leak into the environment. And they say, the EPA says that even the best liner and leachate collection systems will ultimately fail due to natural deterioration. Composite clay and plastic liners, they all fail. They fracture, they crack, they degrade, they diffuse constituents through them. 
and high uh, density polyethylene liners fail as well. They degrade, they become brittle, they develop cracks, they have pinholes in manufacturing. Animals burrow holes in them, glue in, in the seams deteriorates, the equipment causes damage, lightning can strike big holes in them. Um, the leachate collection systems also fail and they contaminate surface and groundwater. Leachate is a, the contaminated mixture of coal ash and water that enters the landfill and a leachate collection system is a, si a system of pipes at the bottom of the landfill fill through which the water enters and is to be removed. But leachate pipes quite often become clogged, they become mineralized and crushed so that the leachate cannot be removed from the landfill. So the water builds up in the landfill like a bathtub and puts pressure on the sides and begins to exit and uh, water comes in and then water goes out. The North Carolina General Assembly recently passed legislation that does not require coal ash disposal facility owners or operators to even inspect the leachate. So we're not going to have protection from state uh, regulations either. Uh, EPA knows that the liners leak. According to their own information in a report called Action Leakage Rates for Le uh, Leak Detection, um, the EPA allows 100 gallons of water per acre per day to leak and, uh, from a landfill, and from surface impoundments, ponds, they allow 1,000 gallons of water per day. This is the best liner. Um, the Warren County, North Carolina PCB landfill is a case study in the failure of modern dry tomb landfills. The landfill was capped with a million gallons of rainwater in it, and um, the water could not be pumped out because the leachate collection system clogged, and so for a decade or more water entered and exited the landfill. Also, the EPA found significant air emissions uh, at the landfill and a half a mile away within a few months. So monitoring doesn't prevent contamination. It merely describes that it's happening. So. If the uh, Coal Waste Management Act of North Carolina um, states that the owner of uh, uh, a coal combustion residual impoundment should do the uh, monitoring and the assessment, that leaves it up to the owner operator to identify their own problems. And there's very little reason for us to believe that the company that's polluting would actually report its own problems. It would be like the fox guarding the hen house. <clears throat> the third reason that citizens oppose the Vista Green facility in Northampton County is that the economic benefits, the alleged economic benefits of coal ash uh, disposal in Northampton County would not offset the risks and the economic cost of coal ash contamination. Who can put a price on people's health, on their air, on their water, their land, their homes, their good reputations? In fact, Vista Green stands to gain huge profits from the burial and liquid impoundment of millions of tons of coal ash from across North Carolina, across the United States, and, and from around the world. Vista Green claims that it will bring opportunities improve, and improvements to the county and local communities through annual host fees and community grant funds, jobs created, small business business growth, and improved county infrastructure. But um, are these opportunities that they're offering the people um, really what they say they are? Uh, what about these long-term and short-term career opportunities that pay generous wages? What about the contracts that Vista Green uh, will offer? What kind will they really be? they really may be contracts with disease and untimely death. We can learn about uh, these contracts from the workers of uh, the coal ash disaster in Kinston, Tennessee. Uh, these workers give compelling testimony from firsthand experience about how dangerous it is to be exposed to toxic coal ash. Uh, these testimonies are heartbreaking and they're infuriating. They were told, these workers were told that everything was safe, but the work was far from safe. They felt as if they were considered collateral damage. And now, uh, more than 50 uh, people are suing the company that cleaned it up, Jacobs Engineering Company, um, because the people are sick and many have died. They have seen themselves as treated as expendables. 
the uh, Center for Public Integrity has been uh, doing uh, some research on coal ash and the following videos uh, by these Tennessee coal ash workers really share what it's like to be exposed to the dangers of coal ash. From County 911. Yes, uh, I'm over at Swan Pond and there's a, a heck of a mess lot of something that came through our back yard. I need you to respond to a way Swan Pond Circle. There seems to have been a huge mud slide in the backyard of this resident. Caller's advising that ordinarily he can see water back there. He sees nothing but dirt and debris. And there is a house involved in this slide. I can't physically do the things that I used to do. The eyes was burning, the headaches, the coughing up of that jelly junk, uh, the swelling in my legs, the rashes of that stuff on my body, uh, the breathing. The impact on my life has been drastic. I cannot do nothing like I used to do. I asked my mom, I said, did I ever have any breathing problems as a child? And she said, you never had as much as a cough as a child. Said so you were healthy from day one. I can't drive a truck because if I'm driving a truck down the road and, and I black out and kill somebody, then that's the end. And there's people that have probably got what my husband has that don't even know it. If not that, something just as serious. The proper PPE that we should have had on that site with the dust and and the things that we that we experienced, every man should have been in a full Tyvek, covered head, half faced respirators, half or full faced either one, respirator. Just in in your opinion, that's what you think would have been best. I know it would have. I wouldn't be suffering the one I dealt with. I wouldn't have friends that's passed on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And his first question was, well, you wear a respirator, don't you? And I looked at him and said, no, they say we don't need one, that this won't hurt us. And he's like, all this will kill you. You know that you can use your own dust mask or respirator, right? No, you no, cannot. Okay. Do you know what the, the plan says about that? Tom Bach and them came over at the trailer and got the dust mask. Okay. Well, I'm talking about bringing your own. Yourself. You could not wear a dust mask on that job, period. Observations or concerns you might have? No. Are you 
go. Not much. Not much. Not too much at all. Yeah. Oh, can you see that? Yeah. Would you say you saw any dust? Yeah, all day. Witness. Okay. Then was it near you? Were you in the zone? I mean, did it come in? Did you, were you walking in the clouds or something like that? No, I mean, I'm the, the area you're in. And <laughs> common day. Yeah. Okay. You got 40 pieces of equipment running, you're going to have dust. I don't care how much your water. Hot and dry day? Yes. Were the, uh, were the water trucks wet it down pretty yes. good? Yes. Yeah. I don't think it's the ash, because I've got the same allergy problems that I've never had before, and I talked to my doctor and it's not the ash, it's the pollen this year is horrible. It's the pollen. Okay. Give it a couple more weeks, take an Allegra or two, it's the pollen. The pollen is horrific this year. You and I have been on this for how many years? Right. And it's never affected us. It's the pollen this year because of the late this temperature variant, so the trees are going pollen, no pollen, pollen, no pollen, so we're kind of getting a longer spray of it. This rain actually helped wash it all off, so give it a couple more days, about a week. Just, trust me, it's not the edge. Okay. You, think, you think I'd hang myself? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, don't. <laughs> don't what? Don't hang yourself with your own. That, that was their excuse for everything when we started getting sick. Oh, it's just allergies. It's just allergies. I think they knew they didn't care. They were in it for the dollar. As time went on, the reason I feel, my personal experience, the reason we wasn't showing a lot of it to begin with is because the ash was soaked. Later on in this, the project side at Kingston, when we started drying the ash to move, that's when we started getting the dust. Sometimes it takes years for that to be, after you're exposed to that, mm -hmm. I've read, for it to materialize on, in your health. Mm -hmm. So uh, that, that's it. That's it. I just want the people to know what they did. To me, we were just sent down there, and that's how it was. If you were up here, they were going to protect you, wasn't going to let nothing happen to you, but if you were down here, you were just collateral damage and you were going to get tossed to the side. They didn't care if you lived or died. It didn't matter to them. I drove a fuel truck from day one, and I drove it for like 14 to 15 hours a day for five years. I, I seen every piece of equipment that worked out there. I seen every location that they worked in every day. I seen all the dust storms. I had a camera in my shirt pocket, and I would take the camera out. And whenever I'd get into an interesting situation and, and I would snap a picture. Uh, I wanted to, uh, to show what was going on on site. 
We had to wade in it. It was muddy. It was dry. It, and the wind blowed. You had dust. It was, uh, it was a horrific thing to work in. So far, there has been like uh, 21 people that have died that worked on that site. You see people every day and you talk to them every day, but you don't realize. And then when you leave the job and you hear three months later, so-and-so died, you say, what? Why did they die? They was healthy when I left there, you know? And uh, it's, it's hard to believe that that many people that you worked around have passed. And most of it is from cancer and, and lung problems and, and breathing problems. So, and, and the blood, don't forget that blood. That's some bad stuff right there because when you have a stroke, uh, it hits you and you don't remember nothing. And uh, so you, uh, you go down wherever you're at and that's it. The Tennessee workers were actually told that they could eat as much as two pounds a day of coal ash and it wouldn't hurt them. Now these coal ash workers are suing Jacobs Engineering, the company that uh, was cleaning this up, and uh, they've claimed that they had neurological damage, respiratory damage, pulmonary problems, that they have been overexposed to radiation and, and arsenic, that they didn't get to work with uh, respirators. They, they feel their collateral damage. They had vision problems. They grew dizzy. They had persistent coughs that left them gasping for breath. They, um, uh, some of them uh, were diagnosed with chronic uh, pulmonary disease, which is a lung ailment. Um, they were not given uh, any kind of respect. They actually had to eat their lunch out on the coal ash. They found that it was not worth their time walking in and out of the facility to uh, have a lunch time, so they just had to eat sitting there on coal ash. In fact, so many of the workers began to get a respiratory condition that they began to call it the fly ash flu. You know, despite the threat, no federal requirements exist to control fugitive toxic dust or state requirements. And when it comes to monitoring, it's easy to ma manipulate the monitors. In fact, the workers were ordered to water down mounds of ash near the stationary air monitors. monitors. Um, they would get a water cannon and blow it off and make sure that it had been washed before the monitoring was actually uh, checked that day. Why should workers and citizens who don't intend to take coal ash uh, uh, jobs be con concerned? Well, not just the workers, but the people in the area should be because contaminated air emissions will be immediate and they will be inevitable and they will spread far distances, just as the air spreads um, all kinds of things, great distances. And not only will there, will there be uh, air problems, but water quality will surely be affected. Vista Green claims that it will use covers on its railroad cars to um, uh, mitigate the fugitive coal ash dust and that it will wet down the, uh, the coal ash to reduce the air emissions. But the reality is that a open landfill is a great wide expanse and that the open ponds are um, also open uh, to uh, contamination. Coal ash is going to dry, it's going to blow, it's going to blow across the county and outside of the county. Uh, just the same as wind does everywhere. It's going to pollute surface and groundwater. It's going to evaporate and become part of the precipitation. The personal testimony of uh, coal ash workers is extremely compelling. And I interviewed several of these workers uh, last month so that they could share with the people of Northampton County and with Northampton County officials what the dangers really are to people who work with coal ash. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, Ansel Clark said that it, knowing what he knows now, he would never consider taking a coal ash job with or without detective gear. He said no matter the pay, the job's not worth it. And Jeff Rohr um, also said that he would never, ever take a job in coal ash and that no amount of money would make it worth him, for him to do that. Um, Ansel said that he wouldn't live anywhere near a coal ash landfill because he said you can't stop the coal ash from blowing in the wind and you can't stop the water from becoming contaminated. Ansel said that uh, one of the reasons they don't want to use protective equipment for the workers because that would be to admit that handling coal ash is dangerous and they've been told all along it wasn't. Um, Jeff said that you know, it really wouldn't work even if you did use complete hazmat Tyvek suits and full respirators. He said it wouldn't be practical because you can't wear them for, for very long. You have to rotate uh, workers in and out. Uh, he said it never would he ever uh, live near a coal ash uh, dump or work in one. He said the heavy medical particles are in the air and that that doesn't even count what leaches into the water. Ansel said that, that one of the first things that he experienced was blisters on his skin. They boiled up and they sealed off and turned gray and hard. It was something that was visible that he could see and feel, and it was awful. Jeff said that he felt so fatigued all the time that he thought it was just because he was working so hard, 12 to 16 hours a day, and that he just wasn't getting any kind of exercise. He said what was happening was he was like dropping off, uh, not really sleeping, but he was not fully conscious and people had to knock on the truck or call him on the radio to get his attention and that's when he decided to go to the doctor. He said, now I'm living with their lie. He has high testosterone levels. He, uh, I mean, he has low testosterone levels and um, they're extremely low and he said that people with low testosterone levels um, suffer from uh, fatigue and mental fogginess as he did, loss of hair, bone loss, prostate cancer. Um, he said also he suffers from uh, high blood pressure, which he said went ballistic. And he said, of course, it leads to stroke and that he's had friends who have died from strokes who have worked in the coal ash. He said also that he's on a daily steroid inhaler and that he has a different inhaler that he has to take with him wherever he goes. Ansel said that he has this rare blood disease that makes his blood get too thick and that's why he had a stroke. Um, he also said that he was exposed to radiation that was in the coal ash and that when they pumped uh, the coal ash out of the river there, the auger was very radiated and he was exposed to a lot of radiation. Um, Jeff pointed out that young families who were trying to, to start a family found that they had uh, deformed fetuses, miscarriages, and a couple he knew lost children. He said, this coal ash is carried in the bodies of these men and is passed on to their children. Um, Jeff also said that when it comes to coal ash, the heavy metals don't just select a particular area in the body. They can sit inside of you for 10 years and then fire up and they can attack different parts of your body, different organs, maybe settling in your lungs or, or your kidneys. And he said that no matter how desperate he was, which he was desperate when he took this job in 2008 during the recession, he would never take this a job again in coal ash. The fourth reason to uh, oppose Vista Green is that Northampton County citizens have equal and constitutional rights to protect their persons and their properties, just as everyone else does. They have a right not to become a sacrifice zone. You know, in the site selection process for a high-risk facility such as coal ash, th does race matter? If you go to the Vista Green website, you'll see uh, from the map that there are uh, there, there's a whole area there of uh, high flood, uh, uh, fly, uh, high flood zone, and so it doesn't look like the hydrology and the geology were the important uh, criteria for picking this site. It was the poverty, the location, and race. Studies show that facilities, high risk facilities, are undesirable, and that they do 
uh, lower property values. And that just attitudes, uh, even if the facility has not been um, actually built, become strong and extensive and they affect property values um, and, a, and a radius uh, around the landfill and beyond. And these attitudes often affect economic activities such as vacationing, taking a job or locating a business. Um, who would want to come to Northampton County uh, if they thought that there was a potential for it to become a coal ash capital? The workers actually gave messages to Northampton County officials. They wanted to tell them directly what they suggested to Northampton County officials. And they said, whatever you do, don't let this coal ash company in your county. It won't help the county. If it's so safe, said Ansel Clark, why don't the owners of the company try to put it in their own communities? And Jeff said that he would not, that the, that the officials should never allow Northampton to become a dumping grounds. Um, Jeff said that uh, if you do, the workers are going to find their blood pressure is going to go sky high and there's going to be high rates of cancer. And he said if they were to decide, if the commissioners were to decide to accept this coal ash facility, he said the county had better get a bunch of pulmonologists who specialize in respiratory diseases because they're really going to need them. He said, Greg Atkinson said, don't do it. You, you need to stay away from coal ash. It's dangerous. And if the county officials did accept the dump, he said, I'd move away. I wouldn't live anywhere near an 800-acre coal ash dump. And who would want to move there anyway? He said you'd be trading life for money. So when I asked them, what would you say to Northampton County citizens? In so many words, all three of them said, fight as hard as you can. Don't stop. That's exactly what's going to happen. Northampton County citizens against coal ash will continue to protect its persons and properties and to do what is necessary to, to stop Vista Green and its coal ash plants because coal ash is toxic for generations. The people of Northampton County will never, ever accept Vista Green and their coal ash and they need to just leave. Just a lot of bungling.